This webinar is meant to be a quick primer on flexible technology usage and what the overall business case for implementing Flex in your next design is. I will discuss the key design benefits and the implementation of flexible circuitry and cover how PADS Professional will help address Flex design complexity, verification, and manufacturing. I will show how to implement Flex in your next design and a few tips and tricks along the way. Market drivers of thinner, lighter, and more compact systems are driving the growth of flexible technology usage. New applications are available when flex PCBs can dynamically interact with the end users by folding and bending. A wide breadth of materials are available to choose from that can fit many new market niches as well, such as medical devices that can be unpacked once inside the human body, or high heat applications and in industrial sensing. The ability to fold, snake, and bend around an enclosure opens up the design space. The entire system is now open up for review and optimization, increasing the product's strategic competitive advantage. Although Flex increases design complexity and PCB manufacturing costs, there are major benefits that have the potential to decrease overall systems costs if looked at from a systems perspective. While dependent on the size of production, this overall cost saving stems from optimizing the product assembly, simplifying testing, optimizing thermal design, reducing component count, and using smaller enclosures. There simply is more design play with Flex. The end system does not need to be dynamically flexible in order for Flex designs to be considered. The concept of Flex to fit or Flex to assemble where the PCB system is folded only during manufacturing to fit in the assembly opens up the design space to create thinner, more compact, and faster to build systems. Circuits can be oriented in a thermally optimized way by wrapping around the assembly. If you have tight spaces, move the circuit, not the enclosure. Bulky cable harnesses that block airflow can be replaced by flex cables. Reducing the need for cable harnesses and connectors can reduce overall system costs and assembly time, while simultaneously allowing for the free movement of air to optimize cooling. Another strategy is orienting the PCB to maximize airflow or get circuits into tight spaces. The enclosure can be optimized in parallel with the PCB. Beat the heat with flex. Depending on the end system application, unique materials can be chosen. DuPont offers many materials for a diverse set of applications including sustained high temperature environments or control and management of heat through increased material thermal conductivity. Flexible systems can be more robust in handling shock and vibration, though increased manufacturing requirements need to be implemented to design robust flex interconnects that are less likely to crack or delaminate. Flexible circuits can be a dynamic part of the product. Increased usability and play in the end system is a feature and will make your product more competitive. Rigid flex design requires a shift in thought from traditional rigid designing. You can't design a flex PCB in isolation. You are designing a system. Tighter collaboration between interdisciplinary fields is required for design success. Design considerations reserved for mechanical and systems engineers are creeping into the electrical domain earlier in the design process. To ensure design success, a holistic view is required to look at optimizing earlier in the design process the PCB orientation, component placement, thermal requirements, and how the system is assembled. The Flex PCB is a central component to this holistic design process. Flex requires a bit of a stretch to traditional PCB design processes. 3D visualization becomes key to identify case integration, component placement, and to identify clearance issues earlier in the design cycle. Designers also have to contend with new manufacturing techniques and design guidelines to ensure manufacturability, stress and vibration handling, and of course, flexibility. But engineers also need to lean on system level verification and analysis, such as signal integrity, thermal analysis, and analog mixed signal. New design rules and best practices need to be implemented to ensure flexible circuits remain, well, flexible, and don't prematurely fail due to stress failures. Partnership with an experienced manufacturer is essential for success. Mentor is here to help. Mentor Graphics is partnered with our customers to address their strategic initiatives to manage increasing complexity. It includes stack up management by board outline, simplifying documentation and stack up management, fully supported 3D design and verification environment, 
quickly export a 3D solid model to an NCAT tool for enclosure and system design checks. 3D DRC checks are essential in co-designing the assembly and how the PCB will interact and be placed in the end product. Quickly verify bend areas and part placement. Leverage curved routing, shape-based via placement, and dynamic copper pores to shave off some time in the design cycle. Remember, you can leverage segment leading simulation and analysis tools such as our integration with our Hyperlinks SI that now supports multiple stack ups. Within the design flow, leverage correct by construction keepouts for bend areas and a comprehensive design rule checklist for reliability and manufacturability. And lastly, eliminating ambiguity in manufacturing output with ODB and mechanical export. In this video, I will cover stack up assignment rigid flex board outline creation, defining bend areas, and a few tips and tricks along the way. This demo is constrained to rigid flex design using an embedded cover layer, where the cover layer is laminated into the rigid section, as opposed to a bikini cover layer, where the cover layer is only applied to the flex section and partially extends into the rigid section for stress relief and adhesion. A flux design requires a master stackup, consisting of all layers to be used in the design. Each board outline can then be assigned a subset of this master stackup. Let's open up the stackup editor through Setup Stackup Editor. In this example, I have previously defined a flux cable with a top cover layer, a plane layer, a polyamide flux core, a signal layer, and then a bottom cover layer. The cover layers aid in copper adhesion and scratch protection. In the stackup editor, by right mouse button clicking, a user can insert below or above a specific layer and insert new layers such as cover, signal, and plane layers. Once a layer is created, go ahead and rename it to make the stackup easier to read. Then define the thickness, dielectric constant, and thermal conductivity. Once the master stackup is defined, individual board outlines can be assigned their respective stackups from the master stackup. Double click on the board outline, then click on the ellipses to expand the layer stackup. Notice the cover layers are included in the rigid stackup for an embedded cover layer design. To verify the stackup assigned, you can open up a read only stackup of the enabled layers and visually look at the stackup. Next, let's define the flex cable board outline. From a mechanical drafting tool, DXF import or IDX mechanical integration is available, or a user can draw the objects in the native drafting tools like I have done here. In this example, various lines and arcs that intersect at the object's vertices can be used to define a closed polygon. A closed polygon is required to define a board outline. Control double click makes a copy of the object, and then finally drag a copy into position, making sure to intersect the existing board outlines on the grid. Notice I took care to define the board outline on a drawing grid. The grid is set up in editor control to allow for precise drafting without round off error. Once drafting is complete, set the object as a board outline. Define the stack up, in this case the cover, plane, signal, and bottom cover layers. Then change the board outline to flex and rename the board outline. Each board outline will have an associated route border that is used as a render fence for the plane data and as a trace keep out. To quickly generate a route border, a built-in tool is provided. Draw, generate route border. Select the single route border for the entire design then select the desired shrink by and click OK. Once generated, change the line width to a zero line width. And take note that the plane layers have automatically filled throughout the entire design, including the flex cable and flex hinge. Next, define the flex region that will flex with bend areas. Draw the bend area through draw bend area. You can change the settings now or later. For now, let's change the bend to 96 degrees. When starting the bend area, you must start and end outside the board outlines you want associated with the bend region. Quickly add a 3D view to visualize the bend area.
As a note, any changes made to the bend area will cause the boards to be redrawn in 3D. Go back to 2D view and double click on the bend area. Let's set a more aggressive angle of 130 degrees. Select the 3D view tab. With the boards closer together, let's measure a clearance. Right mouse button click in the 3D window. Select Measure, Minimum Distance. Then click on a component face of the Ethernet jack. Then click again on the surface you want to measure. A minimum distance dialog pops up with the corresponding distance. 3D visualization becomes key to identify component placement and clearance issues earlier in the design cycle and is essential for faster time to market. There is no need to create a paper model with 3D visualization. A few closing remarks. Board outlines must use coincident stack up layers, for example, 2, 3, and 4, and not skip layers like 2, 5, then 6. And stack ups must share a side, they can't be floating. And finally, the route border must coincide with the correct board outline. In this video, I will showcase some tool capabilities and time saving functionality in creating flexible circuits, including fan out generation, teardrops, Routing algorithms, best practices when routing in flex regions to maintain flexibility, and show off via fencing, dynamic copper boards, and cover some DRC checks. Before getting into the tool, I wanted to briefly cover a few concepts. I-beaming will cause undesired rigidity in a flexible circuit. I-beaming is caused when traces on multiple layers are not staggered. Straight Uniform, non-bending, and perpendicular routing and bend areas is advised to minimize unequal stress on the trace structures. This means avoid changes in trace width, routing at odd angles in relation to the bend, and avoiding trace cornering. Vias and flexible bend areas are also prone to stress fractures due to deformation during flexing. Curved teardrops are a low effort technique to alleviate stress risers by adding additional curved copper to the transition between trace, via, and pads. Though, if the nuts are high speed, it is worth noting that adding a curved copper shape will add an impedance discontinuity. Curved teardrops add more area for drill hole variants and annular ring clearances as well as adding extra area for increased copper adhesion in flux designs. If using planes, it's best to add cross hatching to save weight, increase flexibility, and for EMI shielding. As an alternative, there are conductive shielding films available for EMI shielding. DRC checks are available to check against bend area violations with traces, parts, vias, and plane hatching. The flux DRC checks against possible reliability issues that arise in bend areas. For example, traces that corner in a bend area, width changes, non-perpendicular traces in relation to the bend region, more bend area specific violations such as flex bend radius limits based on the stack up thickness, invalid bend area placement, for example covering a rigid section, parts and vias placed in the bend area when disallowed, plain hatching angle in violation with the bend angle. Although not advised due to stress fractures and flex regions, via shielding can be easily accomplished with the add via dialog. Go to route, add via, select the desired via pad stack, via span, net name, and placement control settings to place shielding vias around a complex shape. Draw an object that will act as an enclosure shape that the vias will be placed inside. Hit apply to generate the vias. The vias will follow a curved shape with the set clearance distance and will obey constraint editor clearance values. Plane hatching is a cinch with the dynamic plane engine. Set up a plane class and change the hatch dimensions and angle. Typically, a hatch angle of 45 degrees in relation to the bend is best, but depending on your manufacturer's process, another hatch angle may be preferred. Go to planes, plane class and parameters. Set the angle to 45 degrees. Notice the plane data automatically regenerates to the specified angle without any additional input. Next, let's generate a fan out pattern in a flex region to show off curved teardrops. It is important in flex regions to reduce the number of potential stress risers 
when traces enter pads with non-curved geometry. Quickly fan out a part using route, fan out, patterns, set the direction to be outside the chip, and use the minimum grid spacing. Let's turn on the dynamic teardrops and place the teardrops. Route, teardrops, and trace drops, curved teardrops. Click selected objects, then process. Teardrops are then added to the selected objects. Curve routing is as easy as routing in hockey stick mode. Just hit F11 to toggle on curve mode. Curve routing can also be applied as a post process. Select the desired bend, then go to route, edit routes, modify corners, Set the action to change to arcs and make sure to set the scope of the dialog to selected corners and not the entire design. Hit apply. Corners are replaced with bend curves. Curve bends help to alleviate stress risers on sharp corners. In this video, I covered the business cases for implementing flex in your design, the benefits and challenges that come with implementing flex circuitry in your design, and how to address these design challenges with the PADS Professional Flex option. Thank you.